Hey guys. <clears throat> hey guys, I'm sorry for the echo. I'm not in the house. I'm in Germany. There was like a storm in England that I missed just by like a day. And now there was also a storm in Germany. So I went from one storm to another storm. Anyway, that's why there's an echo and that's why the background is different and that's why I have no lighting because I didn't prepare, which is what I should have done. Today we're doing a few smaller stories and then a few, maybe possibly two big ones at the end. Let's just get into it. Oh, before I forget, Instagram, Twitter, follow me on there. Also subscribe because we're about 15 thousand away from 500k and at 500k we're making a second channel so that is something that we're looking forward to i guess i am possibly don't know if you are but you know i'm not trying to assume what you're feeling there was a youtuber who i'm not gonna name because i understand naming and shaming and cancel culture but at this point i just want to give him attention because he clearly did what he did for attention so if i say his name then it's like doing what he intended he got on a plane and then halfway through the ride <laughs> ride through the plane journey he said he had the coronavirus just straight up said i have the coronavirus and they had to obviously do an emergency stop turn back around do what uh, do everything and then he came out and said that he actually lied he didn't have coronavirus and it was actually just a prank for youtube because youtubers love giving youtubers a bad rep and it's not all youtubers it's usually prank channels that go around and make youtubers seem like idiots it's because of people like that people don't think that youtube can be a real career and they almost think anyone that does youtube is kind of just an idiot and has nothing valuable to say and this is one of those examples he apparently now posted a video where he apologizes for it but you know it's it's all about intent he intended on doing this to get a reaction of people which would be fear to cause mayhem delay a whole flight like he doesn't know why some of these people were flying back oh it's raining outside and I just think more people need to be considerate of other people's just time and like lives. Uh, yeah, a YouTube prank is not worth this, you know? Next, uh, people have DM'd me pictures of Danielle Conn from her Instagram. I'm gonna put them up, but like extremely blurred. One of them is her in a bathtub, half naked. She's 13, you know? It's like she's 13. Like, I feel like I've, if you've watched my channel for, for a while, you know what my opinion is on Danielle Conn. She is a child. Um, and I don't think she's the one deciding to post these pictures. I think it's definitely her mum posting those pictures for her i'm just not okay with it and then there was another one that was half naked and she's got a tattoo like on her rib cage and she is 13 so i don't know how one she got that tattoo who did the tattoo who approved this tattoo oh wait scrap that jen approved of this tattoo so it would just be another way to get attention from people and spark controversy but yeah it's a bit gross that she's got a tattoo and she's posting still half naked pictures on instagram and the matter of fact is she's not getting more dressed in these pictures she's just getting less and less dressed so with every picture it just gets worse like when you think it's not going to get much worse it does it really does it comes through and it gets worse the ace family recently uploaded a video which was called this is a sad day for us and the video was them selling one of their cars one of because you know of course they don't just have one car but yeah to think that there are so many like sad things happening in the world right now that their sad day is them selling a car to potentially then just buy another car like realistically they're not you know it's kind of like i've already spoken about this it's when they were building the current house that they're living in they would do a lot of vlogs and it was mainly austin that would say very entitled almost things and very out of touch with reality so for example he'd say something like oh my god i love this house because in my last house i had to walk all across the house to get from the gym to the shower it's like you have a private gym in your house you'd think you wouldn't complain about the distance between your gym and your shower when you have a private gym in your house and yeah he just said a lot of things like that and then there were situations where obviously he did the ski jet in his infinity pool and he started splashing down on other people which could have caused mudslides and even ruined people's properties but he doesn't care because it doesn't matter to him or the, that whole family except for obviously the kids i'm not blaming the kids for anything they're doing their own thing but yeah he's very entitled and out of touch with reality and this is another one of those things where he said oh we're going to title this the saddest day for us and we're not going to talk about something actually sad that's happened to us we're gonna talk about the fact that we're selling one of our very expensive cars to probably buy another very expensive car. The next piece of tea is someone sent me a screenshot of Kalel's Instagram stories. Kalel is Anthony P Diaz, ex-girlfriend, ex-fiance even, because I think they were engaged. And if you don't know who Anthony is, he was 50% of Smosh when Smosh was still a thing. So yeah, just to keep everyone up to date. Because I know not everyone was around to experience Smosh in their prime. Oh, what is my hair doing? And Kalel recently has been receiving a lot of criticism for different things she's been doing. It's usually just her being like inconsistent with stuff. So she'll be like, on oh, a vegan diet. And then she'll be like, eating meat. And then she'll be like, I'm doing all natural. And then she's not doing natural. So she's very like everywhere, all over the place. So her kind of character 
direct or her channel doesn't really have much consistency and her opinions and beliefs just change so quickly and then apparently she's also just kind of promotes unhealthy lifestyles sometimes but that is something that I just need to look into more because I haven't seen her channel since her and like Anthony broke up but she recently posted on Instagram something that said there's this massive issue online with women being outraged when other women don't eat enough or are too skinny then it seems like no one dares shame people for overeating or gaining weight overeating kills literally 18% of adults die from being overweight or obese under eating it's actually scientifically proven to expand your lifespan where's the logic in our society and I would just like to say both overeating and under eating are highly unhealthy for you you should be eating the number of calories that you need to eat for your weight height and lifestyle that is just called a balanced diet oh wow who would have thought and it's also not necessarily about calories it's about what you eat um and how you eat it and what you eat it with i think people are so hyper focused on like diets and just doing things that aren't long term very good for you and the way to expand or extend your lifespan the way she claims under eating will do it won't under eating is actually one of the main causes of um death in the uk and that is called anorexia anorexia is i believe in the uk currently the mental disorder that kills the most people so if we're going to get very technical under eating kills a lot of people probably the same amount of people as overeating does i see where she was coming from with the first half of the instagram story many people do shame people for not gaining weight when they eat a lot of food they're like oh you should put some meat on you and it's like that's also just don't say that to people don't be ignorant i've had people say that to me before i've had like grown people when i was like 12 say to me like oh you need some meat on your bones well how about you shut the up sally hmm? i think both sides of shaming are bad and you shouldn't do either but you also shouldn't overeat or under eat because both are bad i don't like how she's promoting under eating to her young audience so she is kind of just saying like to very impressionable people that under eating is actually good for you when it's not it is just not like if you need 2000 calories and you need 1000 calories that's not good for you long term and you're going to be extremely tired and you're at some point your body's just going to start giving up so i'm going to need you guys to have a healthy and balanced diet eat your veggies and all that good and then someone actually DM'd her and she said, it's not my responsibility if someone takes my advice the wrong way. The world is full of dangerous influence. People have to be smart enough to make wise choices for themselves. But the thing is, you don't have to contribute to the unwise choices. Uh, like she's saying it's not her responsibility, but once you start giving advice, it kind of is your responsibility. If she had just sat there and ate her food, no one would have said anything. She can live her life however she wants to live her life. But the moment you say to people, under eating leads to a longer lifespan, the responsibility is on you <laughs> because you're basically just spreading misinformation. Someone replied, dude you literally glorified under eating by pointing out that obesity kills as if everyone who overeats is fat is going to die of obesity if you can't see how that's shaming an entire group of people then i don't know what else to say you try so hard to hide behind facts and refuse to take any responsibility when those facts can actually harm people and that's really sad the only thing i disagree with that message is she doesn't hide behind facts because nothing she said in there was a fact everything she, she said was actually just false or a myth or some kind of her own belief that she turned into a fact in her head but it's actually not a fact under eating is not good for you um <laughs> neither is over eating but under eating is not good for you she said no i stated the fact that 18 percent of adults die from being overweight or obese sure that might be a fact um but then she didn't say how many people die of under eating because she actually claims that it's good for you so i didn't say everyone who overeats is going to die of obesity that's putting words in my mouth and being very dramatic now it's almost gaslighting you know i have a hard time understanding people who prioritize feelings over facts instead of expecting the world to censor itself and constantly cater to the feelings of others people need to equip themselves with the tools to face such harsh realities and then she said kalal you could have easily just left that part out you could have easily inserted actual information that would benefit people and promote healthy eating but instead you provided statistics that are harmful both to larger and smaller people you could have explained how and why under eating is beneficial and then it kind of cuts off a little bit but then it says in case you weren't aware it's okay to admit that you've made a mistake it's not shameful to simply say i could have worded that better or i'm sorry for the communication um you responded to my comment on your video the other day where i said it's harmful to spread that idea that a possible solution to mental illness was just riding it out and in your response you essentially refused to acknowledge how ignorant that was or how that mindset could be hurtful and i think you understand that human beings aren't computers it would be nice if for once you could just reflect on your words and actions and realize that you say and do harmful things and stop blaming others for having those reactions i'm not blaming anyone for having an emotional reaction i'm just saying i don't personally understand such reactions and yes i am making the correct choices it doesn't matter how it's framed under eating is healthier choice than overeating no neither choice is good um i just want to make that very clear under eating is just as bad as overeating but you personally not understanding it doesn't mean it's acceptable to not take responsibility or to not acknowledge that you may be projecting harmful ideologies onto your followers she says i don't consider it harmful otherwise i wouldn't have shared it i know that it goes against society's current idea of what being healthy means but trust me the mold is changing soon i've read hundreds of pages about this topic you're completely missing the point the problem isn't sharing information the problem is the way you chose to present that information and the repercussions of sharing it in that way there were so many other ways you could have presented what you believe the benefits of under eating are without calling out an entire group of people 
deeper in pointing out the dangers of their choices to make your choices look better as if yours could have possibly be dangerous as well and wow what a wonderful way to end that conversation and just snap on Miss Kalel. yeah I think both lifestyles are bad and somewhere bang in the middle would probably be ideal but you don't need to shame people to get them to do what you think is right um, but also sometimes what you think is right isn't always right so there has to be some kind of a balance of what information or opinions or beliefs you share on the internet and how that can affect other people and I know it seems that Kalel is in the stage of being like against social justice warriors and she's so like edgy um with her opinions but that doesn't mean you always have to make people feel like it, just to prove your point next Bretman Rock recently did a few posts with Kelvin Klein and he tagged Kelvin Klein in the thing he also did hashtag my Kelvins and at Kelvin Klein in the caption of those Instagrams but there was no hashtag ad and I'm assuming considering it's hashtag my Kelvins and at Kelvin Klein everywhere he was either sent those products for free but knowing Bretman Rock and the following he has he wouldn't just um, do promotion for some free underwear so I'm assuming he got paid to post those pictures that is all alleged um it's all my assumption but it seems like this is an undisclosed ad and Bretman Rock has recently also done an undisclosed ad when he was called out for it he put hashtag ad back in but at that point it's a little bit too late and I was hoping that he would learn from that and not do it another time but here we are again tell your faves to put hashtag ad and stop doing undisclosed ads Michelle Farn was recently called out for her medication ideas she recently started using essential oils well no she's been using them for a while but she put them on her instagram story and said that she's using essential oils to fight off viruses and now with the whole coronavirus outbreak to be saying to people this essential oil helps with viruses it's a little bit damaging she seems to be very into those like natural <laughs> medication ways and i'm just very into like paracetamol and cold and flu medicine you know i don't believe in like essential oils or things like that. i think they can psychologically make you feel better but then you need something to actually make you physically better and she replied on her instagram story i found this on the beauty guru chatter forum on reddit she said i used to be a skeptic until my limited options led me to giving alternative medicine a try the moral of this story is it to discredit modern medicine science or any industries the point i'm making is we don't know everything in the name of science we should always question everything in pursuit of truth even if it goes against what you know and believe so if you want to use essential oils use crystals do sound, sound buffs do you yeah do you but kind of like the thing with kalel you can do it and you can promote it as a thing but don't make it sound like the only option to get rid of a virus do please let people know that that isn't a way to get rid of the virus completely um and that the way to do that is through medication repeat after me medication see a doctor go to the hospital a cr holding a crystal isn't going to help you i'm so sorry i'm so sorry to to put that out there but it's the truth and i'm just so sick and tired of these influencers finding these like alternative and edgy ways to do things and then promoting it to their young audiences um because it's so damaging it is just so damaging <laughs> to the young audience and they're going to start growing up being anti-vaxxers and essential oil queens you can definitely do both but if you were to give up on one it's sure as wouldn't be medication recently the oscars were happening and eminem performed like his older songs and there were a few screenshots of billy eilish and a few other people like martin scorsese scorsese doing like weird faces while eminem was performing and actually when you watch the video i'm not sure if for example billy eilish was as disgusted as it made her sound because some of them literally looked like they were like nodding along with the music but because of their face and because it was just a screenshot it looked like they were shading eminem so it's kind of difficult to say there's some eminem fans that are like coming for billy eilish and those people and i'm just like how much can you really gather from one image or like a two second video clip not much you'd have to watch all of the oscars and be there physically to watch them and how they react to the performance it seems like they were being shady but at the same time then in some other angles it doesn't seem like they're being shady so i don't know it, it i don't know now onto the last two big stories the first one is to do with tana mojo tana mojo i recently received a dm and i thought about it and i was like interesting tana mojo had two dogs one she bought in 2016 and then one she bought a little bit later and one of them was called lumen i remember that i haven't seen those dogs in like two years where are those dogs what happened to them and did she just give them up because she was too busy and she was living her influencer lifestyle and she was traveling and she didn't want to take care of the dogs anymore because if she did trash i hate people that buy animals that they know they can't take care of and they're not responsible enough to take care of and then they just give them up like used toys <laughs> don't take up the responsibility of having a pet if you know you, you can't do it if you know you're gonna just give them back because pets get attached to the owners and it's just so sad the amount of pets that end up back animal shelters and stuff because it's usually around january and february time 
you know, when parents buy their kids pets for Christmas and then two months in, they realize that the dog is peeing everywhere. It's a puppy, it's biting things and they just don't want him anymore. So they give him back to an animal shelter. And that is how so many dogs get euthanized because they just don't have enough space for all the dogs. So if you want a dog, you really got to want a dog and want to take care of it and take on the responsibility of having a dog for the next like 10 years, not just two months. And when you get bored, just discard. So if that's what happened, I am highly disappointed or I'm hoping she's just not showing them because for example, like when she travels, they're probably with her parents, hopefully, maybe, or like a manager or something. But if she just gave them back, trash. Recently, Jake Paul had his fight and after the fight, he had obviously a lot of after parties. And at that after party was a girl called Julia Rose, who is his new girl that he was talking to. He mentioned in an interview that he's been talking to this new girl and she's so real and he wants her to be his skits after he wins the fight or whatever. And she was at that after party and they were getting very close and cozy. And Tana Roger was there, of course she was. And she was like being friendly with Julia. And I think she needs to get out of that situation. It's just not good for her. She even like staged a fight with Julia in front of Jake prank him. But I think the whole situation is just so toxic and it's so unhealthy for her because she's still around Jake. She still clearly can't like, you know, get over him because she's still hanging out with him. And not only is she hanging out with him, she's hanging out with his new girl. Mm. And after filming a whole 45 minute long video about how he's been so toxic to her and so unhealthy to her and he's bro been breaking her heart, for her to just keep on hanging out with him is not what I want to see from Tana Mojo. I want to see her prosper, either single or with a good guy for her, but not with Jake Paul and definitely not with Jake Paul and his new girlfriend. Please have some respect for yourself, Tana. Please, I'm begging. It's just so sad to watch. Next, a little bit of good news. Tana Mojo released hoodies and it's something like, basically about looking out for your friends and making sure that your friends are okay. It says on the hoodie. And she's selling them and all the proceeds are going to a mental health charity so Tana Mojo is even though she's you know paying herself in toxic situations and doing all that stuff and possibly not taking care of her dogs she is donating a lot of money to charity so I'm extremely happy about that after everything she posted a vlog from Miami so like where all the the fight was and the after parties were but she started tweeting out saying I just hope you're happy I'm assuming that relates to obviously Jake Paul finding a new girlfriend and then she says you guys shooting my show has been the biggest privilege of my entire life and I'm so excited for the season to air but shooting a reality show while processing a breakup and failing health has also been the most exhausting thing I've ever done. I am always exhausted. And that's what I mean. I think she's so tired. She needs to get out of that situation. It is so <laughs> toxic and so bad. The snow is falling outside and it like changes the lighting in this video completely. Why don't I just stop filming now? <laughs> this lighting is so good. And then she tweeted out saying, without you, I'm just in too deep. Oh, toxic situation. Clearly she's going through some poor health as well, as she said, and poor physical health as well as psychological health is never good for you. And I think she needs to get out of that situation right now. And the last piece of tea for today, is some Jaclyn Hill tea. So the story started with Jaclyn Hill's Get Ready With Me where she gets vulnerable and she talks about her anxiety and all her problems that she's had since the lipstick launch. And then she goes, I know you guys claim that I always just pop on YouTube when I have something to sell. And that's not true, but I also have something to sell to you guys, which was just kind of ironic that that's how that happened. And she said she was releasing a new product that she was going to be announcing very soon. And she had wished that she could move this product a little bit further down this launch, but she couldn't because it was so long since they, you know, developed it and produced it so she had to release it now and it is with morphe we all guessed it it is an eyeshadow palette with morphe it's basically just, just a volume two to the initial big palette that she had not the vault but just the big big palette and this one is very like yellowy orangey pinky reddy purpley that kind of a color story the other one was more neutral with a few pops of like blue and turquoise but this one is just very summery and warm but still kind of neutral but still kind of pop of color so it's a really pretty palette i just i'm not a big fan of big palettes anymore i realized that since like i start, i bought my last big palette which was the james charles palette like two years ago a year ago when was it I don't know. And I've never used it. Well, I used it like twice when I bought it and then I just stopped using it. One, because I'm not too big on the formula. I think it, it one, <laughs> there's not really much pigment. For, for them to be pressed pigments and not have much pigment is kind of disappointing. They also just don't blend too well and they kind of blend away. I don't know. It's a whole situation. I'd much rather use other palettes, but it's also just such a big palette. It sits at the bottom of my drawer. I just never take it out because I find big palettes so overwhelming that I don't actually know what to do with myself. I love like smaller palettes which have just a few looks there and then you can grab it and go but it's a very pretty palette but the problem is that it was released before it was released i'm assuming someone that works for morphe stole one of those palettes and then sold it to someone um, on the internet so a girl called ems on twitter bought that palette from someone it was a little bit broken but it was the exact palette it was the exact palette that is being sold now by Jacqueline and um, people kind of realized that because the color scheme of the palette matched the PR box that Trend Mood posted on Instagram and then 
uh, Jaclyn Hill tweeted out saying, having my palette leaked and that moment taken from me really sucks, but I'm gonna embrace this palette that I worked so hard on. I hope you love it as much as I do. And I think it's a great palette, but it's just kind of sucky that that happened because I don't know how that one palette slipped out of the Morphe stockroom. I'm assuming someone at Morphe did that. She's also releasing some brushes with Morphe, which I'm also not a big fan of Morphe brushes. I think at the start, they're like, okay and then they just get so scratchy like so scratchy if you use it on your eyes for more than like five minutes it feels like you just makeup wiped your eyes for five minutes which isn't a great feeling i like more soft brushes because i feel like they do a nicer blend as well also jacqueline hill in the promotional video looked so stunning i think even though she's you know not very happy with the way she looks right now and she's you know saying how her face doesn't look the way she'd want it to look because of a few ways that she's been dealing with anxiety but in this promo she looks gorgeous the makeup the outfit the hair Chef's kiss, she looks so good. If I was a little bit of a Jack and Hill fan, or like more of a Jack and Hill fan, and was more of a Morphe fan, I would definitely jump on this palette purely for how the promo looks. The promo really sucks you in, but you know, knowing Morphe quality and not really trusting Jack and Hill with product, I'm not gonna be purchasing this. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, anything comment down below, and subscribe because I post videos. Whenever something happens, but usually about three times a week, I don't think that's gonna happen this week because I'm on holiday, but you know, we can always hope. So hit that bell and you'll know when that's happening. Follow my socials, the description down below, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.